A sprightly tailor was employed by the great MacDonald in his castle at Saddle in order to make the laird a pair of trues used in olden time. And trues, being the vest and breeches united in one piece and ornamented with fringes, were very comfortable and suitable to be worn in walking or dancing. And MacDonald had said to the tailor that if he would make the trues by night in the church, he would get a handsome reward. For it was thought that the old ruined church was haunted and that fearsome things were to be seen there at night. The tailor was well aware of this, but he was a sprightly man, and when the laird dared him to make the trues by night in the church, the tailor was not to be daunted, but took it in hand to gain the prize. So when night came, away he went up the glen, about half a mile distance from the castle, till he came to the old church. Then he chose him a nice gravestone for a seat, and he lighted his candle, and put on his thimble, and set to work at the trues, plying his needle nimbly, and thinking about the hire that the laird would have to give him. For some time he got on pretty well, until he felt the floor all a-tremble under his feet, and looking about him, but keeping his fingers at work, he saw the appearance of a great human head rising up through the stone pavement of the church. And when the head had risen above the surface, there came from it a great, great voice. And the voice said, Do you see this great head of mine? I see that, but also this, replied the sprightly tailor, and he stitched away at the trues. Then the head rose higher up through the pavement until its neck appeared. And when its neck was shown, the thundering voice came again and said, Do you see this great neck of mine? I see that, but also this said the sprightly tailor as he stitched away at his trues. Then the head and the neck rose higher still until the great shoulders and chest were shown above the ground. And again the mighty voice thundered, Do you see this great chest of mine? And again the sprightly tailor replied, I see that, but also this, and stitched away at his trues. And still it kept rising through the pavement until it shook a great pair of arms in the tailor's face and said, Do you see these great arms of mine? I see those, but also this, answered the tailor. And he stitched hard at his trues, for he knew that he had no time to lose. The sprightly tailor was taking the long stitches when he saw it gradually rising and rising through the floor until it lifted out a great leg and stamping with it upon the pavement said in a roaring voice, Do you see this great leg of mine? Hi, hi, I see that, but also this, cried the tailor. And his fingers flew with the needle, and he took such long stitches that he was just come to the end of the trues when it was taking up its other leg. But before it could pull it out of the pavement, the sprightly tailor had finished his task, and blowing out his candle and springing from off his gravestone, he buckled up and ran out of the church with the trues under his arm. Then the fearsome thing gave a loud roar and stamped with both his feet upon the pavement, and out of the church he went after the sprightly tailor. Down the glen they ran, faster than the stream when the flood rises it, but the tailor had got the start and a nimble pair of legs, and he did not choose to lose the laird's re reward. And though the thing roared to him to stop, yet the sprightly tailor was not the man to be beholden to a monster. So he held his trues tight and let no darkness grow under his feet until he had reached Saddle Castle. He had no sooner got inside the gate and shut it than the apparition came up to it and, enraged at losing his prize, struck the wall above the gate and left there the mark of his five great fingers. Ye may see them plainly to this day if you'll look only peer close enough. But the sprightly tailor gained his reward, for MacDonald paid him handsomely for the trues and never discovered that a few of the stitches were somewhat long. The Sprightly Tailor by Joseph Jacobs